Stan Gibalisco here, continuing our tutorial in regards to the book Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, third edition, published by McGraw-Hill in October of 2013. Originally, uh, the editions were written by Traster and Lisk. This third edition is my revision, primarily involving completely redrawn art, and also some little blurbs, follow the flow, which reviewers had asked for in previous editions, which uh, will, these little blurbs will tell you how the current flows through various circuits diagrammed in this book. Note the spiral binding in the paper-bound uh, edition. It's a little bit pricey, but it has good heavy stock paper. The spiral binding will let you lay the thing down flat on your workbench. It requires no boot up, no batteries, acquires no bugs or viruses, and if you spill your diet mountain dew on it, all it'll get is wet. But what I'd like to do now is look at page 65, figure 4-11, a schematic diagram of a simple half-wave rectifier DC power supply. And I would like to redraw that diagram for you and describe for you how the current flows through it. <clears throat> so let's get started. Uh, I will redraw the diagram so you can see how it progresses, how the electricity progresses through it. It starts with a plug that goes into your wall outlet. In the United States, that's typically... 120 volts AC at 60 Hertz. In other countries, uh, sometimes you'll find 220 volts and sometimes you'll find 50 Hertz. It all kind of depends on the, uh, on the particular country. Anyway, note that I'm using this quadrill paper, which is a real benefit for hand drawing schematics. I have made a whole video just based on the glorious attributes of quadrill paper. That means graph paper. Quarter inch squares very lightly ruled like this. This is a fuse. You probably get a pretty good idea what that's for. Then we have a transformer, which will change the voltage over to the voltage that you want in the end. Usually, in most applications these days, it's a step-down transformer. In some higher voltage applications, it'll be a step-up transformer. So I'll make the same number of little uh, loops on either side. If you look at the book carefully, you'll notice that the Coil symbols are just a little different in the book, but it should be pretty obvious what they mean here to you. Now, what we have here in the, we want to obtain a positive DC voltage here, and we want the negative voltage pole to be there. So we need to put the diode in the power supply so that the arrow points against the electron flow. Electrons can flow against the arrow, so they'll come out of the positive, flow against the arrow, and go around and come out of the negative, back through whatever load you have, and through the positive. But uh, the conventional current, which goes from plus to minus, flows with the arrow. Actually, conventional current doesn't flow. Conventional current is, is the plus to minus uh, configuration for a current which was invented before they really knew that electrons, which carry a negative charge, are the actual charge carriers. It just turned out that after they designed these polarities and then they discovered that electrons carry the current, they also discovered that electrons have a negative unit charge. So that has always been a little bit of a point of confusion, at least for some people. Now, if you have a power supply like this, you're going to get a lot of ripple at this output because this diode 
will produce pulsating direct current. So what you need is to smooth out those pulsations. And you can do that with a large value electrolytic capacitor. That capacitor typically will have tens or even hundreds of microfarads depending on how much current this supply is ca uh, called upon to deliver. The more current that it's called upon to deliver, the more microfarads you're going to need for this capacitor. It's, it's hard to make them too big. I mean, you, if you can make them not big enough, and then they won't smooth the ripple out well enough, but it's hard to make them too big. Let's just suppose, for the sake of of reference that it's 470 microfarads. Now I didn't indicate any component values in the schematic, but ordinarily you will want to place a high value, a high resistance resistor across this capacitor and there's a mighty good reason for that. Particularly if this is a high voltage power supply that capacitor can hold that charge for a long time after you switch this supply off. And if you're not aware that that can happen, and you go to service a high voltage power supply without these so-called bleeder resistors in them, or at least one for each capacitor that charges up, then you're going to get a shock and you might even get killed. I remember uh, an instance where I was working on a supply that delivered 3,300 volts DC. It was for an old tube type ham radio amplifier and this um, and I was going to service that supply because apparently the diode actually it had multiple diodes which uh, maybe I'll get into in another video with a multiple diode power supply but anyway that thing had a capacitor that retained its charge and it didn't appear to have bleeder resistors. So I took a screwdriver with a good insulated handle and shorted out this positive terminal to ground and wouldn't you know it, it was like a firecracker went off. Zap! And the, um, the vice president of the corporation happened to be looking over my shoulder while I was doing this and he wasn't aware that, of what was going to happen and he just about went through the ceiling. He thought I'd burn something out. But anyway, that's what these bleeders are for. But, but when you do service a high voltage power supply, I'd always recommend that you discharge with some sort of an insulated handle metal instrument the positive or the live DC terminal just to make sure you're safe because that voltage, as I said, can be more than enough to end your life if you're not careful. So what happens then is the alternating current flows through the primary winding of this transformer. The fuse, in the event there's a short circuit or other malfunction out here, like suppose that you short out this this uh, DC here, it's probably going to burn that diode out, but hopefully the fuse, if it's a quick break fuse, will burn out first. Anyway, if there's some other kind of malfunction, such as a short circuit in the capacitor or some other some other situation that could cause a fire, that fuse will help uh, keep uh, disaster from taking place. It'll just burn out the fuse. It might burn out the diodes like it did in that supply that I serviced, but those are not generally that expensive. So the AC flows here, the DC, the electrons can only flow in this direction. They can't flow against the arrow in a rectifier diode. This capacitor, make sure you install it with the polarity correct, an electrolytic high value capacitor to smooth out the ripple and then you get whatever voltage whatever nice DC pure DC you want right there so that this particular kind of supply is a half wave supply because it only works on half of the wave cycle during one half of the cycle electrons can flow like that during the other half of the cycle, nothing can flow at all, so you're actually only taking advantage of half of the AC cycle. A full wave supply is more complicated, but it takes advantage of both halves of the cycle and thereby produces a 
twice the ripple frequency, which is easier to filter. It also results in better voltage regulation and things like that. But that is how a half-wave power supply works, how the current flows through it. Again, that's figure 4-11, which you will find on page 65 of Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. It's also a guide to drawing schematics, by the way. Uh, and uh, I didn't in the book mention about the quadrille paper, but see how that, at least the lines are relatively aligned. I mean, I'm not real, real good at drawing absolutely perfect straight lines without a straight edge, but this is good enough. You can see what's going on, right? Stangibalisco, signing off until the next time from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. So long.